Cheech with Fly Fish Food here and we have an awesome hopper video. If you've seen the project hopper but you don't want to buy all the crap and try to figure out how to tie it, I don't blame you. So this is an easier one. It's called the Slum Hopper 2.0. Check it out. This is a really cool hopper. If you haven't looked at our project hopper, you should. It's really cool, but it's it's pretty long process to tie it. And I wanted a simpler version. And so this is the Slum Hopper 2.0. So the project hopper is very involved. You gotta do the body, you gotta cut legs and all this stuff. And this takes a little bit of that out of it. To start out, I'm using the 30 or the 5105 uh, competition heavyweight hook. I like a heavier hook on this one because there's so much foam. The hook helps it keel properly. Anyway, 140 denier thread. Uh, we're just going to dress the hook. This part's pretty critical because if you don't do this right, your hopper's going to just twist all over the place. So I'm going to twist up my thread and I'm going to make it kind of rough and gnarly on purpose because I just want surface area to be there so when we glue this uh, foam body down, um, it will stay in place. All right, so once we're nice and rough and nasty, I'm going to take this and I am going to uh, flatten my thread out by spinning it counterclockwise. And I'll let it sit about right here. If you let it hang, it's right about where the hook point is. So right in front of the hook point. Okay, I've taken some six millimeter cross-link foam in tan and you can do like you can glue three two mil, two mil pieces together or whatever but basically I've cut a block like this it's about as wide as the gap is um, but anyway just a standard block I wanted to do this without a foam cutter so that you can see that you know it's not too difficult to cut a nice hopper body so let's say the heads here I'm gonna have this hang off the back of the fly about that far. And as you can see, I've got a few pair of scissors. These Renameds are gonna be for the fine cutting. And then these, is, these are a five inch Dr. Slick scissor that are really good for you know making the prep cuts. So the first cut that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab it about like this. You see where the scissor is here. Um, I'm going to make that cut first. So now I've got a wedge like this. Then the next one I'm going to make is I'm going to take a little bit off of this angle. And you're going to have some rough edges here. It's not that big of a deal because we're going to take the old trusty lighter to it. All right. So we've tapered off the back end of it. And we're maybe going to come in here now and just take off some more of these hard edges. So right here. I'm going to come in here and just kind of round off that butt angle. I think that's the proper term for it. And then up here, I'm just going to come in with my smaller scissors and I'm going to take off just a little bit of those hard edges before I singe it with a lighter. And then another angle cut at the head. I'm just basically cutting all the hard edges off. So, at the end of the day, I've quickly modeled this. That took us, what, a minute, 30 seconds, something like that. Now, if you just take a lighter and you just barely touch the foam with the lighter and kind of mold it with your fingers a little, um, you're pretty much in. Now, there are some spots where it's rougher um, but as soon as you get thread tension on that, it's not going to be a big deal. The next step is I'm going to lay that right here and I can see that my hook is going to go into that right about where that taper starts. So I'm going to take a tool and I'm going to cut a slot down the middle of this foam. This is a cool tool from Stomfo. It's got a really gnarly um, bodkin on one side. And then it has a little exacto type blade on the other with a little tab to, to, to handle it. It's made by Stonfo. They're pretty cool. So I'm just going to use this tiny little blade. I'm going to cut a, a, a notch in the bottom of this fly, but I can't do that on camera. I'll just show you what it looks like when I'm done. 
so I didn't cut it all the way to the front, but you can see where I just, you know, kind of dug in. And it's about as deep as half of the blade here. So you don't want to go all the way through, but you want to do it deep enough so you can seat your, your hook into the fly. I'm going to take some Z-Mint super glue and just doctor up my thread that I just put in there. That might be a little bit much. Dab it on your finger and then rub it on Brigham's desk. And then you just take that bad boy and you're going to shove it on top of the thread. Easier said than done. There we go. Okay, so we're sitting on the thread or on the on the hook just like that. At this point, I'm just going to take my thread and start wrapping. You don't need to go super super tight here because you'll cut right through this stuff. So I've just done a few wraps, pretty chill. Okay, the next step is I'm going to grab these hopper legs from Rainies. This is the size small. They look like that, and I'm just going to tie that in. This size small is perfect for this, this size hopper that I'm doing. And I'm just going to tie one on one side and one on the other. It's pretty dang easy. You just tie it in where the tabs are. Just like that. Now I don't like how the legs are kicked out that far to the side. So what you can do is you can take a little, little tiny bit of super glue and just kind of put it in that little crease. Too much. Wipe it on Briggs table. And then I'm going to take my legs and I'm just going to massage them back where I want them. Hold them at the angle I like, about like that. And then, well, one of them worked. More glue. So I'll just push them back like this. And now they stay. All right. Grab your favorite overwing material for your chubbies or whatever. This is, I think, I can't even remember what this one is. Just some type of para post material. We'll post it um, in, the direct, in the recipe. So I've just taken, you know, however much I, I want the wing to be, and then I just uh, double it over. But to double it over, I kind of push it forward so that there's a little hoop or loop of of material I can really crank down. All right. So now our wings tied in. I'm going to just trim that about just like that. All right. So I'm just going to take a piece of two millimeter foam and I'm going to cut a piece maybe equal to the width of the body. And then I'm going to cut a point in it. Just like that, and I will lay that on top of the body. And that little point just kind of helps the wing lay back. Now I'm going to lift up the foam, take my thread here, and I'm going to make it kind of jump across. And I'm going to catch it so I split the rest of that kind of in half, roughly. So just like that. This part's pretty easy. We're just going to tie in some rubber legs for our front legs. And I like to do it just with one long piece. Tie a leg in one side. Actually, I'm going to tie them a little longer because I'm going to color these up. Just tie it just like that. And then to finish it off, and I'll, I'll color up the legs in a second. So don't don't go anywhere. There's a we're not done yet. So be patient. I'll pull that over and tie this one down. All right. So we're almost ready to whip finish. Cut this off. And I like to cut off these little hard edges on this one. And for an indicator. I just have a peach or flesh piece of foam. You can use orange, yellow, green, pink, whatever you like. And I'm just going to tie that bad boy down. It's kind of cool because it kind of all just sucks in together. All right, 
So I'm going to leave that indicator a little bit longer, about like that. It's aerodynamic. It will kind of go with wherever the wing's going. And instead of a whip finish, I'm just going to take my super glue and I'm going to tag the thread last place it went. Squatch just growled at me. I don't think she liked that idea. All right, so we'll just trim that off. And now for the fun part. To mark up the legs, I'm just gonna grab, these are, what color are these? These are dark golden stone. There's one called mud brown, a lot, I like a lot. I'm just gonna grab these and pull them down and then just take the marker and rotate the, the marker. I'm actually gonna use the, the thick end of this. So I'm just going to rotate my marker. It's a thick marker head, but it compresses all down as soon as I let them go. See that? And I'm going to add some two-tone to this. So I did a little bit of brown, and then I'll just take the, the red one. We'll do some red, too. So like that. Okay, now once the, the legs are all done, we're going to just trim them up. And now we're going to detail the rest of the fly. So we're going to make an eye out of marker. Sorry, I'm a little handsy on this one because i got to touch stuff. black eyes just like that and then we'll come in here and we'll add a little bit of detail to the body just like some stripes underneath I just like leaving the the hook in the vise if you have a rotary vise it's super easy to get to and then for the legs or for the feet you can take like just like a plastic bag or something and put it behind it so that you can just mash the marker down and color the whole foot in one go. Just like this. There you go. That way you don't paint your fingers. But anyway, you can get real crazy with the paint job on these. Um, but it's a pretty simple hopper. A lot of it's pre-made for you and it's super, super durable.